Hello, friends. I'm Steve Russell, sales manager for Evergreen Digital Showroom in Lebanon, Missouri, with the latest video in our series about car brands that once were at the top of the industry and are no longer in business. If you've not seen our videos on the Packard and Studebaker brands, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Evergreen Digital Showroom. Today's video will feature Duesenberg, a company that produced some of the fastest and most luxurious cars of the 1920s and 30s. The name Duesenberg is well known in the collector car world. Despite the company manufacturing slightly less than 1,150 vehicles between late 1921 and its closing in 1937, the company's iconic legacy as a builder of luxury vehicles is cemented in automotive history. We have several Duesenbergs in our portfolio, and we'll showcase some of those in this video. The Duesenberg story began in 1913 when brothers Fred and Augie Duesenberg founded Duesenberg Motors Incorporated in St. Paul, Minnesota. The brothers were self-taught engineers and built experimental automobiles and race cars by hand in their shop. The first taste of success came in 1914 when Eddie Rickenbacker drove one of their cars to a 10th place finish in the Indianapolis 500. Later that year, a Duesenberg took first place in the French Grand Prix, gaining international recognition and respect. World War I interrupted automobile production as factories were converted to support the war effort. The brothers established a factory in Elizabeth, New Jersey to build airplane and marine engines. Following the war, the Duesenbergs sold their factories in Minnesota and New Jersey and moved their operation to Indianapolis, Indiana and incorporated the Duesenberg Automobile and Motors Company Incorporated to manufacture passenger cars. While the brothers excelled at engineering, they realized other people had better business skills. In 1919, the brothers sold the rights to their name, patents, and drawings to Newton Van Zandt and Luther Rankin, who became president and vice president of the company respectively, with the Duesenberg brothers being salaried employees in the engineering department. Their first passenger car, the Duesenberg Model A, was the first production passenger car to feature four-wheel hydraulic brakes and a straight eight-cylinder engine. After several delays, the first Duesenberg Model A's were finally delivered to dealers in December of 1921. The car quickly became a favorite of celebrities of the day as it was one of the fastest, most powerful luxury cars available. Sales of the Model A were slow, as few could afford a car costing the equivalent to $86,000 in today's money. The plan of producing 100 cars a month greatly exceeded the capabilities of the factory, which struggled to produce one car per day. Over the six-year production run for the Model A, only 650 cars were manufactured. Duesenberg enjoyed success at the racetrack, building the pace car for the 1921 Indianapolis 500 and winning the historic race four times between 1922 and 1927. The victories did not increase car sales, but did create investor interest that provided cash flow to keep the company in business. Van Zandt had exited the company after only one year, and finances went from bad to worse. Duesenberg went into receivership in 1924, and Fred Duesenberg assumed presidency of the renamed Duesenberg Motors Corporation, but he was unable to raise the needed capital for the company going forward. E.L. Cord purchased the company in October of 1925. Cord tasked Fred Duesenberg with designing the Model J. Cord wanted a car that would be the best in the world, the fastest and most expensive car of the day, built to overshadow every other luxury brand built anywhere in the world. In the meantime, the company began limited production of the Model X, a sportier version of the Model A. Duesenberg manufactured 13 Model X cars, of which five are known to remain. The company also produced a single Model Y vehicle that served as a prototype for the Duesenberg Model J. There were several unofficial subseries for the Model J, the SJ, the SSJ, the JN and the SJN, and while never officially designated as such by the company, these names given to them by auto enthusiasts are widely accepted today. The SJ is a supercharged Model J. The SSJ is a supercharged Model J built on a shortened 125-inch wheelbase chassis. The JN was a Model J built with Rolston coachwork, and the SJN was a supercharged version of that vehicle. Most Model J cars were built on a chassis with a wheelbase of either 153 and a half inches or 141 and three quarter inches. 
Only two model SSJs were built, and records indicate at least one chassis was, was stretched to a wheelbase exceeding 160 inches. As was the custom for luxury cars in that era, only the chassis and drivetrain was factory built with a body provided by one of several coach builders. A Duesenberg Model J chassis with a naturally aspirated straight eight dual overhead cam engine generating 265 horsepower was priced at 8,500 with a finished car generally falling somewhere between 13,000 and $19,000. At least two Model J's reached a price tag of $25,000 which is over $380,000 in today's currency. While there were minor modifications built during the production run, it's interesting to note the majority of the Model J chassis were assembled in the 1929 and 1930 model years. The model year given to the car was determined by the year the chassis was bodied, not the year the chassis was built. Fred Duesenberg died in June 1932 of pneumonia, resulting from serious injuries he sustained when he crashed a Murphy-bodied 1932 SJ convertible. His brother Augie assumed the duties of chief engineer, and Harold T. Ames was appointed president of the company. Duesenbergs were flashy cars, favored by many of the popular movie stars of the day, as well as the leaders of business and industry. The cars were also favored by members of European royalty. The cars were not only luxurious, they were fast and powerful. A supercharged Duesenberg could produce nearly 400 horsepower and was capable of speeds in excess of 140 miles per hour. Fred Duesenberg had met E.L. Cord's expectations. Advertised as the world's finest motor car, Duesenberg production ceased in 1937 with the collapse of Cord's financial empire. There were a couple of cars finished after the company folded and were delivered in 1940. Augie Duesenberg began manufacturing and selling marine engines, exiting the automobile industry after the company bearing his name closed. The war year decimated the value of Duesenberg cars. By 1945, when the war ended, some Duesenbergs were being sold for a few hundred dollars, a small fraction of their cost when new. As interest in classic automobiles began to grow in the 1950s, Duesenberg values began to rise. The first Duesenberg to break the six-figure mark came in 1974. Values continued to climb, and a little over a decade later, a Duesenberg eclipsed the $1 million mark in 1985. In 2018, one of the two SSJ models produced established a world record price selling at auction for $22 million. These cars are still highly sought after by collectors, often bringing a price exceeding a $1 million when they do come up for auction. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're still watching, I want to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Evergreen Digital Showroom, where you can find all the videos we've produced to date. We plan to continue this video series telling the stories of historic automakers that are no longer in business, so keep watching our Facebook and Instagram pages. Check out a sampling of the vehicles we have offered for sale by visiting our website, www.evergreendigitalshowroom.com. If you see something that interests you, feel free to give me a call at 417-532-8000, and I'll be glad to try and answer any questions you might have. From the staff at Evergreen Digital Showroom, have a great day.